Hello, this is Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College, and this is a special uh, message I want to give to you today. Uh, I want to talk to you about the resurrection and the, the glory of the resurrection, what we've got to look forward to. In Psalm 146, if you've got your Bibles, you might want to look this up with me. And, and uh, Psalm 146, we're told that when a person dies, it says in verse 4, his breath goes forth, he returns to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. And that very day his thoughts perish. So the idea of someone haunting a cemetery, the idea of someone uh, uh, up in heaven looking down at you, that's not going to work. I've got a uh, mint in my mouth here I've got to take out. I've done that on television before too, I think. But uh, the Bible says that when you die, your thoughts perish in that very day. So why do people say, well, they're up in heaven looking down at us right now? Why do they say, well, they're, in some cases, they're down there looking up at us right now? Uh, or they're in some haunted house haunting somebody, uh, scaring the daylights out of them. Why would your loved ones want to come back and scare you? Think about that. Now, that's not to say that there aren't haunted houses. There are demons, there are spirits that are involved with some of these houses and, and they do haunt people. Uh, people have been involved with uh, seances and Ouija boards and things like that. But when a person dies, they, they don't, they don't, they're not consciously alive up in heaven. They're not consciously alive in hell. They're not in uh, what is some people call Abraham's bosom. And the Bible does not teach anything about Abraham's bosom being a place where people go when they die. The Bible doesn't say anything about that. That's just total myth. It's not there. So, the scripture teaches that when you die, you're dead, like a dog or a cat. That really irritates people. But this is what it says right here. I happen to think of a scripture here in Ecclesiastes where we're told what happens when people die. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But what I want to talk about today is not what happens when you die because most of us I hope most of you listening already understand that, so that's nothing new. What I really want to talk to you about, though, is how glorious it is when a person dies to think about the next moment of their consciousness and what, what, what is that going to be like? When you die, what is it going to be like? So, But I want to give this as background material. In chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes, let's see here, verse... Uh, 19, for that which befalls the sons of men, human beings, befalls beasts. That's not monsters. The word beast here in Old English just means animals. Even one thing befalls them. As the one dies, a dog or a cat or your pet hamster, as one dies, so dies the other. My mother used to tell me dogs don't have souls. They don't go to heaven when they die. Because I wondered, well, what happens to, to the dogs? And uh, she said, well, they don't go anywhere when they die. They just die. They're dead. Well, it says here, as one dies, so dies the other. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 19. Yea, they, they have all one breath, or one, one soul, one life, so that a man has no preeminence above a beast. Now, that's what the scripture says. You don't have any preeminence biologically. Intellectually, and spiritually, yes, you do. You're made in the image of God. But biologically, you are your flesh and blood and bone, and that's what a dog or a cat is. Uh, you know, rats and skunks, they're flesh and blood and bone, and, and so we have no preeminence above an animal. That really irritates people, but here it is in the Word of God. Chapter 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom, in the grave whither thou goest. Ecclesiastes 9.10. There's no knowledge in the grave. Now, a lot of people want to take the word grave and just uh, put the Hebrew word in their shield and leave it untranslated because they say, well, we don't know what, we don't know what shield is. Shield is probably some compartment of hell where they're maybe being tormented or maybe even good people go to shield. And yes, they do when you understand it's the grave, but they think that they're conscious and alive. And right now, they're sitting there for thousands of years waiting for the judgment so they can be resurrected. But they're alive and conscious according to the myths that a lot of churches teach. But here's what it says. When you go to Sheol, whatever Sheol is, 
and here it's translated, and it's translated over 30 times as the grave. There is no work. You don't work. There's no device. There's no knowledge in Sheol. Well, obviously, Sheol then is nothing more than the grave, exactly the way these Hebrew scholars translated it. There's no knowledge. There's no wisdom in the grave where you're going. Now, that's what the Bible teaches. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 says this. Because people say, well, wait a minute, isn't there a separation? Somebody asked me just uh, recently, isn't there a separation between soul and body? And I said, well, the soul is the life, the life force. And it's like when you plug in your tape recorder, you plug it in. I don't know, maybe most people don't use tape recorders anymore. I still do. But anyway, you plug it in. And it has, that's the life force. The electricity is the life force. Well, when that happens, then, it comes alive, doesn't it? The cassette player starts to work. And then the cassette tape records whatever you want. Now, if you've already got something recorded on it, you put it into that cassette. It's already in the cassette player. You record it. But let's say, and I want to back up a minute, rather than say you, you play it, what happens after you've recorded all of your memories and all of your thoughts and even your breathing, your, your spirit, as it were, what happens when you drop the tape recorder on the floor and it burst? And you, you can't use it anymore. You don't throw away the cassette tape. You put it in your pocket and you keep it. Now, if you pull the cassette tape out and you listen to it, there's no life. You don't hear any sounds. So what you do is you go down to Sears, you get your glorified tape recorder, and you put the same identical tape, the same words, same thoughts, everything, and you put it in that big jam box. You put it in a glorified tape player, and guess what? It comes back to life. And all the memories that you recorded in that old body are now in the new body. The voice, the memories, the thoughts, the devices, the knowledge, the wisdom, even the work that you talk about, the work that you're doing, it's all recorded on that cassette tape. It says there, there is no work and no device, no knowledge and no wisdom in the grave. So when, you, when that cassette, that old cassette player dies, you throw it in the trash. There's no knowledge in that, but you take the spirit out, put it in your pocket, you go down and get you a new tape player. When you put it in there, it plays the exact same words. It's like it comes back to life. You are like a tape player. You, you are a body, you're a soul, and a spirit. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. So when the body dies, what happens to the soul? The soul is like the electricity. It dissipates. But what happens to the spirit? Now, some people think the soul and the spirit are one and the same thing. No. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says that the word of God can discern. Man, man can't. Mankind can't do that. But the Bible discerns between soul and spirit. The Bible will discern between soul and spirit. There is a difference between soul and spirit. Romans chapter 2 and verses 28 and 29 talks about the spirit of man, which is the heart. Now, what's the heart of Texas? It's not a cardiac muscle. The heart of Texas would probably be Waco, right in the center of Texas. What's the heart of an apple? It's the core. What's the heart of man? It's not the physical body, nor is it the cardiac muscle. The heart of man, according to the Apostle Paul in chapter 2 of Romans, is the spirit, the essence of man. And so what happens when you die, the body dies, but that spirit is like a cassette tape player. The body is dead, the electricity is gone, or the, the, the energy, the life energy is gone. And yet God still has your, your spirit. Now listen to what it says here in Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 1, remember now your creator the days of your youth. While the evil days come not, for the years draw nigh when you say, I have no pleasure in them. I've been to nursing homes and people are sad and they're very upset. and they're, 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 You think they'd be happy. They're retired. They don't have to work. The golden years, right? But no, they're sad. And sometimes they just say, I want to go home. And, and a lot of them are just miserable waiting to die. So when the evil years draw nigh, and you say, I have no pleasure in them. And then, you, let's skip down for time's sake to verse 5. The last three lines says, His desire shall fail, because man goes to his long home, which is the grave. And the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, the silver cord, something that attaches you to your body, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. This is poetic language. 
and the wheel broken at the cistern. Then, when that silver cord is loose, etc., then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. <coughs> and the spirit, the spirit of man, shall return to God. Now, that's obviously not just talking about the physical breath. The word spirit, ruach in Hebrew, can be understood to be breath. But it's not talking about your physical breath because it doesn't go any higher than the ceiling. It stays in the room. So it's talking about the essence of man. Etymologically and denotatively in Hebrew, this word can be translated breath or wind, but it's referring, like we talk about the heart of Texas, it's, it's a symbolic expression, the core of Texas, or in this case, the core of man's being, goes back up to God who gave it. Your intrinsic self, your intrinsic identity is with God. It's like the cassette player uh, tape. I, put, I let the player <coughs> die, and I put the cassette tape in my pocket. Now, we're all familiar with 1 Thessalonians 4. I'll read it again, though, verse 13. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep. They're not up in heaven, or if they are, they're asleep. The Spirit goes back up to God who gave it, but it says when a man dies, when the silver cord is loose, the body of a man goes back to the dust. A good man like the Apostle Paul or an evil man like Adolf Hitler, the body goes back to the dust, but what happens to the spirit of a saint or a sinner? It goes back up to God who gave it. How about that? So where is Hitler today? He's not in hell. He's in the grave, but yet his essence is with God so that God can raise him from the dead. Where is the apostle Paul? He's not in heaven. Years after he died, John wrote in John 3, 13, no man has gone to heaven except he that came down from heaven, Jesus. Now, Paul's spirit is with God, but so is every wicked person who ever died because their essence, their intrinsic being is with God. But there are two resurrections. There is one for the saints at the beginning of the millennium and one for the wicked at the end of the millennium. Now, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning them who are asleep. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, those who sleep in Jesus, they die in Christ, God will bring with him. How's that going to happen? Well, it tells you how. It says, The Lord himself, verse 16, will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. That's how he's, God is going to send these people back with Jesus when they're going to meet the clouds of heaven, and then they're coming back down to Jerusalem. So this is what's going to happen. When every person dies, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the dead in Christ, not the wicked, but the dead in Christ, shall rise. And they'll rise first, and then we who are alive, if we're still living, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now, when people die, I've seen Seventh-day Adventist artwork where they show these ghoulish creatures rising up out of a cemetery, looking like ghosts, like a a sheet or something like Casper the Friendly Ghost. This is Seventh-day Adventist artwork in the religious books. And they're coming up out of these graves. Can you imagine when you wake up in the resurrection, the first thing you see is you're in that dirty old dead, corrupt, stinking casket that's been laying there in that wet ground for the last 200 years? No, no, no. What happens the moment after you die? Well, you're asleep. But you don't wake up in a casket. Notice, the dead will rise, and we get the idea of physically rising in altitude, but they rise not in altitude from the earth, they rise from the dead. They wake up, they're revived from the dead. How's that happen? They wake up in the clouds of heaven, and then we who are alive and remain, we hear the trumpet sound, we look up, and we see this multitude of people. Every eye will see him. And here's a multitude of angels and the dead who have been resurrected, and maybe three seconds after the trumpet sounds, they wake up in the clouds of heaven, and you and I, if we're still alive, we're caught up to be together with them. They, they're in the clouds. <clears throat> One more passage I want to give you here. 1 Corinthians 15. Some people don't believe in a resurrection. Verse 12, some, some uh, among you say there is no resurrection. You don't need a resurrection if you're already in heaven. Verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead, and he's become the first, not the only, the first fruits of them that slept. He was asleep. 
I had um, a medical procedure done about two years ago, maybe three years ago, time goes by so fast, and they put me to sleep. And I don't remember anything. I just went to sleep, woke up two years ago. I woke up and, you know, it's all over. One of the beautiful things about being a Christian and dying, and, I'm, and what's the occasion of this message is just last night, um, uh, Jeanetta's loved one, can I mention this? Yes. Her, her grandmother, 95 years of age, peacefully just went to sleep. Now she did uh, have a disease, but, but she was, they were giving her pain medicine. She's been talking for weeks and weeks. She's been doing all right. But she just got weak and her body began to shut down and she hasn't eaten in a few days or so. We knew that it wouldn't be very long, but I went and talked to her again yesterday and she recognized me. She was cognizant. She knew me, knew my face and everything. And I talked to her and I prayed with her again and, and she, she was very aware. You know, I, I can't prove it, but I'll bet you that she was laying there because she told me, she said, I'm ready to go. She said, I'm ready to go. She told me that not yesterday because she couldn't talk yesterday, but it, but recently when I was talking to her, she said, I'm ready. And I think she even said, I want him to go ahead and take me. Was she, yeah. she said that. So I'm ready for him to go ahead and take me. And so I can't prove it, but I'll bet since she couldn't talk to us and yet she could pray and she was fully aware, I'll bet she was praying, Lord, I'm ready. Go ahead and take me. I can't talk. I can't eat. I'm ready. Just go ahead and take me. Just go ahead and take me. Can you imagine? what it's going to be like for her. She simply closed her eyes and the next moment of her consciousness, she wakes up in the resurrection in the clouds of heaven in those beautiful white billowy clouds of heaven. I've been up there many times in airplanes. I've, I've flown little airplanes up there and seen these canyons of clouds. I tend to think very likely there might be a, what we call a sky that is, uh, you know, overcast. And so it looks like a ceiling from down here. Pilots call it a ceiling. But if you were on the other side, the sun would be shining and it would look like you're on a floor. You ever notice these cartoons where they show people walk around in heaven and they're ankle deep in clouds? You know, there may be more to that than just what we might think. Because when you wake up in the clouds, you're going to be standing there. You won't fall through. You're going to be a glorified spirit being and you're going to be standing there on the clouds. And you know, when, when she wakes up in the clouds, and it, it may be... Uh, in the next 20 years or it may be in the next 200 years we don't know when jesus is returning but to her it's instantaneous she closed her eyes she wakes up in the clouds of heaven the first heaven and jesus christ is there in a multitude of saints and a multitude of angels can you imagine how happy she's going to be and to her it happened just like that i mean it's just instantaneous you've got nothing to dread about death except for the fact it may come sooner than what you're ready for. But when you're ready, I mean, to be 95 years old, she'd had her family. She had done everything she came here to do. She had no additional goals. She's ready. That is a blessing to live that long and be in your right mind. What a tremendous blessing that was. And she wakes up in the resurrection and for all eternity, she's going to be with Jesus Christ, going to see her parents again. She's going to see other loved ones again. Tre tremendous. That's the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't, if there's even the slightest doubt about your salvation or your conversion or that you have the Holy Spirit, you ought to take care of that immediately. And you probably know the scriptures as well as I do. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, John 3, 16, Acts 2, 38, and so on. So make sure that you know that you know that you know that you're, you've made your peace with God. We have peace with God, Romans 5, 1 says, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can only have peace with God through him. What a tremendous, tremendous thing to know that the older we get, we're getting just one day closer, one day closer, and there'll be no more migraine headaches, no more toothaches, no more taxes to pay. It's going to be beautiful. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this message. You might want to tell your friends it's short, we're a little bit shorter uh, this evening, but tell your friends to tune in and watch this. It might encourage them, especially if you know someone who's who's had uh, someone to die in their family recently. So, no, I'm not going to play the piano. She's trying to get me to play the piano. I might do it in the future, but not today. But anyway, 
God bless you. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us at any post time. Them or write comments us on the video. Or post them in the comments on the video, and we'll get back to you later. So that's all for now. God bless you.